well, that's a problem, but no worries, I've got just the solution. I'm Alan Smith, welcome to Garden Style, a show about interesting ways to grow, cook, and design your world. Now in this episode, we're focusing on problems, common household problems that you see around the home and garden, and we're coming up with some great solutions. In today's show, we'll take a look at some great plants that are known for their usefulness, and I'll show you what you can do with one of your veggies that turns out to be an overly abundant producer. And later, Zach Gibb will show us beautiful design elements that can perform double duty. After the break, I'll show you a fun way to salvage your broken terracotta, so don't go away. You know, I love to come up with creative ways to use things we might discard. If you grow things in containers, particularly terracotta containers, you know, you can break them. So why would you throw away those broken pieces of shark? They're great for putting in the bottom of containers. You can also use them in a different way. For instance, I'm taking these broken pieces of a terracotta saucer and using them for name tags in my garden. Of course, for instance, this is dill, and what I'm doing is I'm writing on this shard I can write dill, and this variety is fern leaf. So fern leaf goes on that. It's particularly helpful with different kinds of thymes, because there are dozens of different types of thymes. Also basils. And then if you start getting into annuals and perennials, well, you know what I mean. There's all kinds of names that you need to remember there. What I like to do is just take a terracotta shard like this. It's important to wipe it off just with a wet paper towel. You want to make sure that any kind of residue of soil is removed and dust all along the edge here. And I've done these, you can see. So this would be basil. And I'm going to use it for that one and that's columnar. If you're like me and you have friends who visit your garden and they're very curious about what you've planted, well, by having some of these signs around, they'll know exactly what's planted there. The other thing I like about this terracotta is that, well, you're recycling it, but it also will last a long time. You're using a waterproof indelible marker, so the print on it stays for at least a full season. And these are natural looking, so they don't pop out. They don't look like litter in the landscape. Just an idea, give it a try. If you have problem areas outside your home, often plants can be the perfect solution. For instance, if you have a spot that suffers from a lot of heavy foot traffic or runoff, try a nice ground cover like Winter Creeper. It's easy to grow and maintain. Another great problem solver is a hedge. Hedges like Needlepoint Holly can provide a natural way to screen an unsightly area in your yard or your neighbors. Even if your biggest obstacle is a lack of space, you can choose plants like this sky pencil holly or even top hat blueberries, which produce delicious blueberries that can be grown in a limited area. So the next time you're trying to figure out what to do in some of those troublesome areas in your yard, you might give plants a try. So you have a problem in that you say you'd like to grow some vegetables and herbs for yourself, but you don't have much time and you don't have much space. Well, if you grow herbs and vegetables in containers like this, hey, it doesn't take much time, and you can see it doesn't take a lot of space. I'm going to dedicate this container to herbs I use a lot of. For instance, I've got basil in the back, which will get really big. Call this my thriller because it gets tall and spiky. And then I'm going to fill in here with thyme that will cascade down. That will be a spiller. And then in this space, I need a filler, and I'm going to use this curly parsley for that. What you want to do is you just simply cut off this plastic tag, unwrap it. You're going to tear into the peat pot, which is biodegradable, by the way. And then you just want to work those parsley just in the front like this. Now, remember, soil is so important here. You want a organic soil that has been blended for 
container use. You see, you want it to maintain moisture, but at the same time, it really needs to drain well. Take a look over here. On this side, I have three containers, sort of a counterweight for this one large one on this side of the steps. You want to make sure that you maintain consistent moisture in these containers, and you can do that a number of ways. One is, always use saucers under them, like I have here. Also, if you want to water them, use a watering can or a spray nozzle that has a gentle flow in it, because you don't want to beat your plants up. All you need to do is just make sure that a couple times a week you're making sure that these plants have plenty of water. So if your problem is you don't feel like you have enough time or space, the answer is creative container gardening. What a great way to spend a Saturday morning growing some of your own vegetables. Of course, who doesn't enjoy the warmth of a fire in the winter? But once the wood is burned, you gotta deal with that ash, or somebody has to. So what I thought I would do is just take some of these tools that I have here and clean out the firebox. This is a Rumford firebox. And you can see over the past couple of weeks, I've built up quite a bit of ash. So basically what I'm gonna do is just take this out and fill up this ash bucket with it. And you wanna make sure that you gently pour it in like this. And it's also helpful to put some newspaper down in case you happen to spill some on the rug or the hearth and so forth. Now, wood ash contains about 1% phosphorus and about 5% potassium and a lot of other little trace elements that help our plants grow. Now, depending on your soil type, this wood ash can come in handy. So why don't I get this cleaned up and let's head up to the garden and I'll show you how I apply it. So let me show you a little indicator out here in the vegetable garden that the soil might be slightly acidic. If you see moss growing, that's an indicator that your soil is acidic. A lot of these vegetable plants really like to have an alkaline soil, and that's what this <clears throat> ash will do. It'll help make the soil a little sweeter. Of course, there's no magic to this. What I'm doing is what we call side dressing this row of Brussels sprouts. I wanna make sure that there are no hot coals in here that would make a unpleasant experience. So I just kind of go along and throw a handful of it and I'll do this row and finish it out on both sides and then the next time I have a bucket of ash I'll come out and do another row. See what I'm doing is I'm changing the alkalinity of the soil just slightly so over time I'll get the chemistry of the soil right. Coming up, problem solving window treatments. Natural light brings a lovely ambience to any room. And while large windows can pose a problem when it comes to sun exposure and reduce privacy, window treatments can often provide the perfect solution. Zach Gibbs shows us how they can add both function and beauty to your home. Well, Zach, I am so pleased with the transition these draperies have made in the room. They look fantastic. Are, are you happy with them? Oh, absolutely. The outcome's great. Well, you know, when we started, I, I designed those valances that were mounted at the upper part of the window, and I always thought, well, it'd be nice to have some, some drapery panels. And the fabrics you chose couldn't have fit the room better. Well, we just did an echo, you know, off of that stripe on the valance, and then chose one of your linen samples, which was a great fit. It's a soft color, so it doesn't overwhelm the room given the amount of fabric for these panels, but works perfectly with the valances, definitely. So see, you got the shears mounted as well. They really soften the light coming into the room. Absolutely, the dual treatments that you selected uh, serve a great functionality purpose in this room. During the day when the sun's really beaming in, keep the shears closed, protects your floor, furniture, artwork from fading, filters out the sun so it's not glaring if you're sitting here with friends. With these, we did a uh, privacy liner so the natural light can still filter in to uh, still let the natural linen texture show. We chose to give these drapery panels a slight break on the floor, a slight puddle, just to kind of blend into the more traditional setting. Yeah. Uh, it allows the drapery to flare out a little bit, adding a little bit of volume or bulk to it. For more of a contemporary feel, usually we recommend going straight to the floor or just off the floor to keep a straight line I see. Uh, with the drapery really panels. Line with the floor. Exactly. And so if someone wants to add new window treatments, what would be the first steps? 
I always suggest first getting samples, hopping online, getting free samples, just to see how the material feels and the colors look. So you really should see it and hold it. Absolutely. Hold it up to your walls, hold it up to the paint surrounding the area and your furniture. From there, any functionality questions, pleat style questions, etc., give a salesperson a call to really guide you through because each application does have different features to it. And lastly, get a great installer. Measure twice, install once, I think <laughs> right. is the saying. Yes. Um, but a good measurement and a good install really completes the project, which we captured here. Well, Zach, these are a beautiful addition to the room, and thank you so much. Thanks for having me. When we return, we're pickling peppers, so don't go away. One of the thrilling things for me about growing a few plants in my vegetable garden is the abundance, the amount of vegetables that you can get from just a few plants or a small area. Take, for instance, these peppers. These are cayenne peppers. 12 pounds of peppers picked off of eight plants in one picking. It's quite an amazing yield, wouldn't you say? But you know, for me, that's a problem because I'm a guy who doesn't like to waste anything. So what am I gonna do with all of these peppers? Well, I love pepper sauce. And there's so many different recipes out there. But what I wanted to do today is just share a really basic one with you where you can take advantage of these peppers and some of the others that I grew in the garden, make something delicious that you can share with friends and you can enjoy the flavor throughout the entire year. All right, to get started, it's really simple. You just wanna make sure that your jars and closures are, are clean. What I mean by a closure, that would be the ring and the lid that goes on top of these canning jars. Next, place a rack in the bottom of a boiling water canner and set your jars on top of that. Then add water to the jars until the jars are two thirds full. Add water to the canner, and then you wanna heat this to 180 degrees Fahrenheit, but you don't want it to boil. You see what you're doing here is you're just sterilizing the jars. Now you're gonna to wanna to do the same thing with the lids and the rings, so place them in a saucepan and cover them with water and heat them to 180 degrees. Now through this process, you just wanna keep the lids and the jars hot until you're ready to use them. Now for the fun part, the recipe. Now you can be creative with this, but I want to share this recipe with you because it really works. And it's because I have these certain peppers in my garden. But just remember, you can come up with any kind of ratio you like. It depends on how much heat you like with your pepper sauce. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking some cayenne peppers. Here they are. You can see we have lots of them. And I have a generous two cup portion here. And I've just coarsely chopped these, almost just cut them in half. And then this is the hot cherry pepper. You can see those here, beautiful. I've got three cups of those. And then this is the mildest of the peppers. This is a banana pepper, and I have six cups of banana peppers. So you can see the colors here are really quite beautiful. Now the other part of this recipe is the solution, the vinegar solution that you pour over them. You see, I use six cups of vinegar, two cups of water, and three cloves of crushed garlic. You see, what happens is the garlic infuses into this water and vinegar solution. Gives it a nice little touch. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pour that over these peppers and fill up the jars. So you'll see in here that it's really hot and steamy, just the way it's supposed to be. And what I'll do is I'll take these jars out one at a time, this handy jar holder. Be careful because it's really hot. You just want to pour the water out of them and then place them over here like this, one at a time. All right, there's the last jar, okay? Now, what we wanna do is we wanna take these peppers and pack them in. And um, if you want to, when you're working with peppers, you can use uh, these gloves. It's handy uh, because they're really hot and you don't wanna rub your eyes. At this point, I'll handle them because it's just easier. But what I'm gonna do is just add a few the cayenne and basically what you're trying to do is pack them in, pack as many of them in as you can. I like to distribute them equally. Okay, and we'll save a few for maybe the top. Now I'm gonna add some of these beautiful banana peppers. And I'm gonna cap it with some of these hot cherry peppers. Got a few cayenne left here to go on the top. Then you can take a little spatula and just push them down. 
All right, now I've packed them down. Now it's just a matter of pouring the vinegar solution over them. This is a handy little device that helps me guide the vinegar in. And here's our vinegar. And so what you wanna do is I'll just set this aside and then begin to pour it in like that. You wanna bring the vinegar up just about to the top. You wanna to make sure the peppers are completely covered. That's really all there is to that. You wanna just push out as many air bubbles as you can by just taking a plastic spatula like this and push them down. All right, now I'm just gonna use these tongs to lift out the lids and I can place them on there, just like that. Here's another one, They're still pretty hot. You can see on the bottom of these, there's a rubber seal and that's what's important here because you wanna make sure that that seal is set. So I'm getting them all evened up. Okay, next I have these screw bands that go over the top and you just want to tighten those down just to where it's tight to the touch. You don't wanna crank them down too much and this will make sure that you get a nice seal. It's back in the bath they go. And here's the last one going in. The water's still pretty hot. Now what you wanna do is you want to raise the water level to one inch above the jars, the top of the jars. So I'm getting that water level up and I'm gonna bring this to a boil, and this needs to boil for 10 minutes. Then I can turn the heat off, and I can set the jars out. So here we go. Now, once those have uh, boiled for 10 minutes, you'll bring them out and let them cool for at least five minutes, maybe even longer. I like for them to become completely cooled. Uh, these are some I made earlier in the day and they are cooled. One of the things you can do just to check to make sure that you've got a seal is you can hold it like that and uh, make sure that it's tight and if it doesn't come loose, then you're in good shape. A simple recipe for pickled peppers. Now I'll have pickled peppers to use in, well, all sorts of things throughout the year. There's more garden style just after the break. Well, we've had a lot of fun today. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have, and thanks for joining me. And I hope along the way you've picked up some solutions that will help you better grow, cook, and design your world. For Garden Style, I'm Alan Smith. What a great way to spend a Saturday morning growing some of your own vegetables. Come on kids, grow, grow. Yeah. Of course, who doesn't enjoy a warm fire in the, su in the summer? Okay. Well, you're in the middle of this. Right, he does. Okay, <laughs> there we go. What's a lie now? What's a lie? What's a lie now? What am I supposed to say? What am I supposed to say now? Mike, okay, sounding all right, Brent. This one goes out, you right? Okay, right ho, right. I'm a big recycler and believe in reusing things as much as I can. So why not turn a problem, a broken, well in this case, terracotta saucer that goes under a container into something useful in the garden?